My name is Kylie Minson, and I am a marketing associate here at Inflow CX. And today we are going to be talking about triggers for automatic processes as part of our Genesis admin training uh, series. So a couple of housekeeping items. Um, we do have one other um, webinar happening this week. It's happening on Thursday, December 14th, Crafting Conversations, um, Best Practices in Chatbot Design and Deployment. This or The upcoming webinar is the second um, chatbot webinar in our series that we have going. So if you were on the first one or missed it, that one is on our YouTube if you want to check it out. Come join us this Thursday to learn about, yeah, best practices in chatbot design, and we'll be joined by Vanessa Van Arsdale. But for today, um, for our agenda today, we're going to have a quick little commercial about who is InfoCX, and then I'll hand it over to our awesome trainer, Richard Dixon and he'll take you through all of that. Um, we will have a Q&A section at the very end, but if you have questions uh, throughout the presentation, please feel free to drop them into that Q&A option at the bottom of your screen, and we will um, either hit them then, or um, we will save them for the end, depending on time. And then with that, so InfoCX um, helps you evolve your contact center technology and operations to deliver unparalleled experiences for your customers. So we do that, um, or we help organizations evaluate, deploy, and optimize their customer engagement technology and strategy through providing a vendor-neutral approach to CX technology evaluation, BPO, labor strategies, and operational effectiveness. Um, we help you make data-driven decisions utilizing ROI and TCO business case modeling. And our expertise spans the core CCAS as well as, you know, the other fun parts of the ecosystem such as CX, AI, UC, WFO, BPO, automation analytics, you name it. We can probably help you with it. Get in touch if you need. <laughs> um, and with that, we work with some of the best or world's best organizations to el or innovate their customer experience. As you can see, this is just a sampling of the customers that we have. Um, so it spans all different verticals, all different sizes from startup to large enterprise. Um, we're there to help. And this is just a sampling of the technology partners that we work with. There are tons and tons of players in this space. And so, and we work with the majority of them. If you don't see them on here, we still probably work with them. Again, this is just a sampling um, of that. So as you can see, CCAS, the CX ecosystem, UCAS, workforce management, um, and then others. And so with that, I will hand it over to you, Richard. All right. Good morning, everybody. All right, we're going to kind of go over the prerequisites that are required for triggers. So these triggers are going to be allowed to um, do multiple things within the org. We're going to go over just a subsection of what I have available over here and what we use it for. But in order to do this, you do need to have either a CX1, a CX2, or a CX3 license in order to have access to it. Uh, you also need to have the ability to create the triggers. And for that, you'll need process automation, trigger, all permissions, or the appropriate combination of process automation, trigger, add, delete, edit, view, or test permissions, depending on how you want to regulate uh, somebody who has access to it. You also have to have the ability to create workforce within architect. So that would be architect, flow, add, edit, and view. So a trigger includes three components. You're going to have your, your topic name. So that's going to be the event for which you want to invoke an action, your workflow target, so that action is going to take uh, on the matching event. And then the condition, the criteria that must be met for the action to be acted upon. So the following lists are examples of some of the notification topics that are available when you create triggers in Genesis Cloud. New topics are updated regularly, so you want to keep checking back uh, on their site to see what they have available. So you have something like user ID activity, you have events and conversations for ACD, so when it ends, when it starts, after call work, that's what the ACW is, uh, wrap-up codes, attributes when the customer ends conversation, when the customer starts, an outbound, a user end, a user start, voicemail in and voicemail star also evaluations. So there's a lot just available right there uh, to be able to make kind of a determination of what kind of trigger you want to automate to be able to go, hey, did this event happen? Do I want something else to, to go along with it? 
So when you select a topic in the trigger view, the event schema on the topic is displayed as a reference. You can then obtain a list of topics available to your organization by fetching a GET request. For more information, see the API and the Central Development Center. So if you go into the Developmental Center, you'll be able to find more information. So workflow targets. The trigger of the architect of the workflow type at administrator creates workflows. So you have to have a workflow first to be able to set all this up. Uh, after you have that workflow in the trigger view, you can only select a published workflow as the workflow target. The data format in which the input parameters are sent to the workflow are top level primitive fields, such as strings, enums, numbers, and booleans. So there is a condition, so that's kind of the first part of it. The condition are a list of criteria under which the trigger of the uh, invokes the workflow target. The condition expresses, uh, includes some of these parts. So JSON path uh, defines the uh, path of the event to compare. So uh, express conditions used in JSON path, a language used to traverse the and parse the JSON document to find specific elements. You can also use JWay or JSON Path Evaluator or the JSON Path Test Tool to check the response you get from your JSON payload or the JSON um, statement. Then you have operators. So this defines the comparison between the JSON path and the output variable string comparisons are case sensitive. So that's important to make sure you have that case sensitivity in there. Excuse me. The trigger uh, In the trigger view, to see a description of the operator list, check with the help view of the filter operators, and then you have the value. So user divide value or values for the operation to take a single value or a list of values. The input value can be a string number or Boolean values, dependent on the selection of the operator, the input type of the value change accordingly. So they can change depending on what you need. And the input type of the value ensures the accuracy of the comparison. So here's some of them here. So you have the operator, you have an input type. So greater than or equal to less, you're going to have a number uh, less than or equal to. So very similar to what you would use if you're doing something along the lines of doing like an agent check uh, with a JSON that you've already built and have in the system. Uh, very similar. So not equal to equals less than, greater than, n. So you can have an array of objects there, not n, or contains an object. So you could do something like contains an email, uh, all, so all the array of objects, does it exist? And then there's size as well. So to create a trigger, you'll have to follow these steps. So you'll have to go into admin and that's where all of the stuff would be located. Go under architect and then triggers, and then you can add a trigger. But before you do that, you must have that workflow already built out. So that's an important step with this. You can't create a trigger without a workflow because it requires a workflow to be published to assign a trigger to it. Enter the name and description of the trigger and click add. Under the topic name, select a topic. Under the workflow target, select a workflow to invoke. Optionally, you can specify conditions that must be met for the trigger to be invoked and add a condition you just click add condition. Under the JSON path, enter the attributes of the schema that you want to compare. Under operations, select operator for comparing the JSON path to the user defined values. After that, you have to enter the strings according to the operators selected using something along the lines of string and array for JSON input, numeric for your numbers and Boolean, which would be a true or false in that situation. So no, Genesis Cloud formats the value based on the selected operator. For some values must present them in JSON format. Therefore, it's important to test the triggers. So that's really important. Test your triggers before you go live with it. After you've done all of that, you click Create. And optionally, you can create, click and save and test. And the test trigger window will pop open. And then you'll be able to test the event uh, to format and the test. The results will show the validation of the test event, and verification of the, the test target, and the conditions applied to the trigger. After that, activate the trigger and then toggle to activate and click Save. Again, make sure you test your trigger before you activate a trigger, test it to validate the configuration. And then you can use the notifications that develop a toolbox to generate an example for the test. Testing helps you to identify all the errors that are within the system. All right, and I'm gonna share out my screen here so you are able to kind of see what we have going on here. I'm gonna show you um, one that's already built out. 
And this is one that we use here in our production environment. And what this allows is we have a webhook set up where we can identify when an agent is out of sync with what we expect to be in. So, um, so if they, since all of us have an hour lunch, we have a timer that checks once they change their status to lunch. If it goes over an hour and five minutes, we have a webhook that sends a message to one of our supervisors to identify, hey, somebody is still in that lunch status. That way we can reach out and check on them to find out. Or a break duration, which is going to be 15 minutes. We have it where it'll alert us and so on. Let me share here just a moment. So I'm going to show you the webhook, or not the webhook, but the um, other portion here. Is it sharing out? There we go. So you can see the workflow that we have here. So we have the first, we have a couple strings here. So we have a case. Is it going to follow the JSON data here? I will show you that here momentarily. But it's looking for, does this case equal one, two, or three? So in this case, we'll do case two. Did each person change their lunch or change to lunch? It immediately sends off a trigger. It does an hour and five minutes. It does a get user presence. So it's going to check for the individual's ID that went into lunch status. After an hour and five minutes, are they still in meal presence? If they are, from there, it will then send a webhook, which in this case, if you want to have a webhook, you'll need to reach out to like your MS Teams administrator to be able to have the ability to set webhooks up. You would put it in the webhook URL portion here to allow it to send a message to a group in there to go, hey, somebody's still in that lunch section. From there, it will time out. Same kind of deal with a break. So if they go into a break status, we have a 16 minutes, which is a 15 minute timer. It's gonna check the presence. Are they still within that break segment? If they are, send a message. Let me pull this open so you can see it a little bit better. We're gonna change screens. So this is what the status change target or the trigger is going to be. So we're in the trigger section now. You can see the event schema here. This has got all the information to be able to trigger that. Since it's really hard to read, I'm going to make it a little bit larger here so you can see it. You can see that what it's doing here. So it's looking for uh, the type string. It's looking for the object. From here, it's going to indicate the routing state of an agent. So are they in offline? And that was the original one, uh, the case one. Are they in offline queue? Are they in idle interaction, not responding or communicating? So we can see a change when something happens. So uh, let's say somebody loses internet. They're not able to respond back. That should trigger something indicating that, hey, they're off queue all of a sudden or in a not responding state. After that, we have that lunch string. So they're going to also look for the date and time modified. They're going to pass that information along. You have our last one there, which is going to be the the um, the break time portion of it. Minimize that. So that's some of the things that you can do with triggers is you can automate processes to be able to uh, have alerts sent to MS Teams or other webhooks, uh, however you set it up to have it, send a message to you as opposed to having just the alerts that are built into Genesis. You can do things like this. All right. Is there any questions about how we set this up or questions about triggers that I might be able to answer for you. I'm going to stop my share. I'm checking QA if there's any questions. I haven't seen any questions come up, but if you do have questions and you you can't think of them now, you can always reach out to our support uh, line and we'll be able to help you and answer that. Uh, so that's our number there, 844-846-3569. And that will allow you to be able to reach out to us and we can answer any questions that you have, whether it's related to uh, triggers or any other automation or just general Genesis questions, uh, feel free to reach out to us. Awesome. Well, thank you all for joining us today for this um, Genesis Admin Training webinar. Um, this or the upcoming webinar next or on Thursday, excuse me, is our last webinar of the year. Um, so if 
yeah, feel free to get registered for that. And if not, we will see you next year. Thank you, everyone. Take care.